so when we had this meeting, we had a situation where uh, corn was getting expensive, calves were pretty high, so we had lots of cheap hay and forage, and we did the budget, we presented that stuff, it looked like that year, background is going to pay as good as it probably ever had, and market increased, those prices remained sound on the feed, and we did make quite a bit of money background. Last year was a different game. Cattle were still fairly high, but corn was really peaking and hay was doubling, if not going over that in price. The cattle market fell off and there wasn't a lot of money to be made with steers. Some of the money was lost backgrounding in some cases. The heifers, which were very discounted in the fall, actually probably made a little money if you held on to them long enough. Well, this year we're again faced with a pretty strong calf market. We've got a couple other fundamentals that are a little different. We've got grain prices dropping, and we've got our hay prices back down to where they more traditionally have been. So it looks like it's going to be more of a routine year to make some money. You get your cost of gain in line, you put a few hundred pounds on, and there's certainly a margin maybe in growing some calves. Anyway, the topic I'm going to talk about this year is corn silage. And uh, we all know in North Dakota, corn has gotten to be a popular crop cash crop, increased use for silage, and it's kind of a phenomenal crop in that you can produce a lot of material off an acre of corn. It just grows, it's a big robust plant, and so we have more interest in silage for feeding and salvaging some of our grain crops that don't make it, and there's some other factors probably increasing silage interest in that you can put up a lot of feed fast, although it costs a lot to do, it has some advantages. If we think about corn a little bit, it's sometimes referred to as the king of forages, no fault of the queen of forages. There are two predominant forage crops in the country. Uh, it's a very versatile feed, very popular feed, and when it comes down to how much beef you can actually produce off an acre from the nutrients or the feed you can raise, it probably stands alone and it beats everybody else by quite a margin. Safe feed, palatable feed, Feed a lot of classes of cattle, it's used for uh, finishing rations as a roughage source, it's used for cow rations as a supplement, and it will support calf gain around that two pound a day gain if you've got some decent silage with a little supplementation. If we just hit a few of the basics here and think about the nutritional value of corn silage, it is a highly digestible forage, and maybe it shouldn't even be called a forage and that about 40% of its weight is probably grain and the rest is more forage material. So it's a medium energy feed. And when we put a TDN value on it, as you see on the NRC values, about 72%, most of our hay is run in the 50s up to 60, and our grain is in the mid 70s to 90. So it's a medium energy feed, it's a little low in protein. Uh, the average book value is 8.6, we sometimes find it at 10 or 9, but it never exceeds that by very much. It's also a feed that's got some calcium and phosphorus in it, probably adequate for maintenance type rations, but for growing calves, we need to supplement some vitamins and minerals. Generally not much of any toxicity or problems with feeding it, it's safe, other than sometimes under drought it can accumulate some nitrates and there'll be some caution to, to test for that. Well, if we're going to talk about some economics of corn silage, it's probably worth reviewing a budget of what it costs to grow an acre of corn. Each year, our Ag Econ Farm Management Group puts together budgets for each region of North Dakota for the variety of crops raised in that region. This here is a budget for North Central North Dakota 2013 for growing corn. You can see the numbers in there are fairly high. The inputs are fairly high to grow corn. These technology trait crops, such as corn, has a seed cost that's projected in that budget of $66 an acre. Herbicide, 17. Fertilizer, 80. And that can vary by $30 or $40 a year, just depending on how that fertilizer market fluctuates. Fuel repairs, insurance, interest, you sum those direct costs up, it's $246. 
In this region, the land rent they're using is $50 an acre, brings it to $296. Add in a little bit there for some overhead, your farm insurances, electricity, and your machinery cost to own, and it goes up to $350 an acre. And these are averages and numbers, and your individual situation may be better or may be worse. The one number I dropped out of the budget that they've put out is the $18 drying charges, because for silage, that wouldn't be an included cost as it would be for grain corn. So, it's going to take a lot of money to raise that acre. What are we going to get back from it? We've got improved corn genetics nowadays. The corn yields are quite phenomenal. Uh, talking to growers in this part of the state, there's a number of them feel they've got 20 plus tons per acre out of this year's corn crop. And most of it has been silaged in the last week around here. We did a corn silage variety trial here at the Minot Research Center this summer. They had some, uh, some hybrids that were submitted by various companies, some various different maturity dates and so forth. And I've got them listed here. Uh, this trial was planted a little on the late side. It was planted in late May. It's harvested October 2nd. It's harvested at 63% moisture, which is kind of right on target of where we want to be in 30 inch rows on wheat stubble. It yielded around 14 and a half ton on average. There were some hybrids up to 17 and a half. Some grain corn checks put in there to see what short term or short maturity grain corn would do against some of the silage hybrids. And that was down to 10 ton. So that's one year snapshot of what corn silage yields were here. And as I said, we know that that can be better than some years but probably not as good as some people experienced this past year. So $350 an acre to raise about 15 tons of corn silage. We also know that while we hay kind of all summer long, it seems to never end. We just keep haying and haying, and whenever the sun shines, it makes some more hay. Corn silage has the advantage of we have a very short harvest season, but it takes a lot of people and a lot of equipment to make that happen. And most people nowadays don't go out with their two row choppers and do a lot. We have a lot more custom cuts. Someone comes in and he puts up the silage in a few days they're gone. But it comes at a fairly big cost. Unfortunately, we don't have a statewide survey of chopping costs that's current. The last one I found in our extension publications was 2010. I put those values up for you to look at. They're reported either by acre or per hour. In field chopping and hauling in that last survey, I had a most frequent rate of $500 an hour. Talking with people this year, they wish they could have got it done for that. Uh, getting quotes at 650, 800, some with fuel, some without, some with trucks, some with extra for trucking. But what I think it comes down to is somewhere seven, eight dollars a ton is what you need to figure to get it in a pile. And of course that will vary too considerably by situation. Kind of an important point with corn silage, costs a lot to raise, you get a lot of material, it's got good feed value. You go out there in the field and chop it, you leave very little in the field. And if you go, do a good job of feeding it, there's very little feeding waste. But there is an area of big concern, and that's what waste in the pile in storage. And that can be high, and there's lots of ways to store silage. But in a pile, in a bunker, in a bag, in a silo, in a bale wrapped in plastic. And I've got a chart here that shows you that there's some losses in storage that can get as high 20-30%. Now there's some things we could do to minimize that in a pile. We could chop it fine, pack it well. We could chop it with the right moisture, about 65% water. And then we can cover the pile to keep it from drying, keep it from rotting. We can feed and use the face appropriately so we don't expose a whole more that we're taking out each day. But there's a loss when you do everything right. There's probably still 10, 15% of lost dry matter what you thought you harvested 
what actually went through the cow. So that gets to be a cost that needs to be figured in somewhere along the way. So what we really want to get down to is what it costs to raise, what it costs for nutrient. So how do you price corn silage? A variety of ways to do that. Easy way is just the old thumb rules. Once upon a time it was a third of the cost of good alfalfa hay. Then it was seven, eight times the price of corn. And as we got more grain corn in our silage, things changed relative to one another. Kind of the rule of thumb that floats around is ten times the price of corn is what silage is worth. So this year, I don't know what you want to put corn in. Is it four and a quarter? Is it three and a quarter? Is it four bucks? I used, in my example, three dollars and seventy-five cents. I think locally here it's about three sixty on the board. A few outside communities from here, it's probably thirty, forty cents less than that for new crop. So I picked the number. But whatever the number you pick, you can put it in the <coughs> concept the same way. So ten times three seventy-five, ten times more thirty-seven fifty. But probably a more accurate way to come up with a price is to say a ton of silage can take water, hay equivalent, grain equivalent. Let's price all three components at their market value, add them up, and see what we get. Well, a ton of silage is 700 pounds of dry matter, and that 700 pounds of dry matter is about 280 pounds of corn, about five bushels of corn, plus about 420 pounds of hay equivalent. You add them together, you're about $38 a ton. Of course, if you're raising corn and selling it for your feedlot and your cattle, you want to get your cost of production, so you can also price it about what it costs to raise. Earlier, I showed you about what it costs to raise an acre of corn. I showed you what it approximately would yield here at minus this year. And if we put those costs to raise it, divided by the amount of tons we get, plus realizing we're going to lose 15% of that maybe in our pile, we end up in that $37 cost again. So that's kind of a ballpark number for this year but you should base it on what you think your corn is worth. Just because I put 375, and maybe a lot of farmers who aren't willing to sell at that, and so corn isn't really available at that. So that might be a little bit underestimated, but it's certainly a methodology to do it. So what we're getting at is, is this going to be a cheap feed to feed? Is it one of your best alternatives to feed? It's a good feed, and we're going to talk about feeding it later, and how effective rations can be made using corn silage. But I put a little table together to calculate what a cost of a pound of energy, which corn is mainly an energy feed, is compared to other choices for forages or energy. And I use grain corn, alfalfa hay, oat hay, and grass hay. Based on how much moisture is in it, based on the percent TDN that it has, we come up with a cost, cents, pound of TDN, and you can see the corn silage is at 7.4. Oat hay, I had at 7.2, grass hay at 5.3. Alfalfa hay, of course, you get more protein in there, but just on an energy basis, it's 8.7, and corn grain at 8.9. Some of these other feeds have some feeding losses. If you start adding those in, it makes it a very competitively priced feed on an energy basis. And like I said before, we can get more TDN off an acre growing corn silage. Acres are limited in our operation than we probably can with any other feed. So I guess I would just summarize some of these numbers, some pros and cons for corn silage. I think those of you who are raised that realize you get a lot of production, high yielding, you can do a lot of things, you're feeding a lot of cattle in a lot of different ways with it. Once you're set up, it's easy to feed, and as I showed you before, it can be a competitive source of energy if you can get a good yielding corn hybrid to produce a lot of tons. Disadvantage is you're going to have to shell a lot of money to raise it. The inputs are very high. If you don't do a good job of storing it and you lose 25-30% to spoilage and dry matter loss, then your cost becomes uncompetitive. And certainly once you make the decision, grow corn silage, your marketing options are very limited, and as I showed you earlier, there is some difficulty in actually determining a price uh, when you're marketing it. So with that, I guess I appreciate the opportunity to be on the program. We've got a lot more speakers for tonight. I'm going to wrap it up there, and uh, 
We can certainly have some discussion where it's appropriate in the next program. We'll take some questions even at this point right now. So, I guess we can mute our mic and turn the program over. And anybody else who wants to make a comment or question, we can take it right now. John, this is Carl at Carrington. Uh, any comments about potential yields that you've seen in other locations or heard of in other locations across the state? Well, my circle of travel hasn't been across the state, but I know I've been uh, west of mine. I've seen a strange yield at uh, 22 ton. I've been south, more in the McLean County area, where a grower told me his was uh, 21 ton over 160 acres. Um, I think east of here, we're here some 23 ton, ton an acre, and I'm not sure if those are accurate or based on truckload lots and how many lots loads they think they put in and what they thought was on each truck. I think there's some opportunity to do some checking of yields out there to make sure we know what it really does yield. But here at Minus, this was done accurately. We were around 15 ton. Thank you, John. Here. Yeah, thank you. 